Operationalizing cyber threat intelligence refers to the process of systematically integrating and leveraging threat intelligence within an organization's security operations in order to enhance its threat detection, prevention, and response capabilities. In simpler terms, it's about taking threat information and making it actionable within the organization's daily operations. The first step to operationalizing threat intelligence is gathering threat intelligence from various sources. This could include open source intelligence, OSN, commercial threat feeds like Mandiant Advantage or CrowdStrike's Falcon X or Proofpoint's Emerging Threats Pro, internal incident data from past incidents, other information from industry groups or partnerships, and choosing the right source is one of the most important steps. The source needs to be relevant and have an understanding of your environment for it to be useful. Once you've collected the intelligence, it's critical to analyze it to understand the relevance and credibility and tune the intelligence to your environment. A failure in this step will lead to missed detections overwhelming noise, alert fatigue, even excess resource consumption, and possibly drop packets on your sensors. And if you don't see the traffic, how can you identify the threats? However, tuning is not just about the evidence itself. It also includes the configuration of the security tools and the systems it will be integrated with. Creating ignore lists is also important when tuning traffic. Vulnerability scanners and other allowed administrative traffic can generate a lot of unnecessary, true positive alerts that consume analyst time to investigate. Zeek packages are another form of behavioral IOC detection. Knowing which package to enable or disable can make the difference in the performance of a network sensor. Tuning also includes the relevant IOCs and eliminating redundant ones. Loading MD5, SHA-1, and SHA-256 hashes for the same file is redundant and takes up resources that could be used for more important detections. For example, selecting all of the hashes from CrowdStrike's Falcon X intelligence database that have been seen in the last 30 days would provide over 10 million of each type of hash. Bottom line, too many alerts is the same as no alerts. Integrating the relevant threat intelligence into the organization's security tool and processes is the next step. Selecting which intelligence goes where is very important. While sensors are in the best position to provide real-time detections, they are often limited in resources and cannot handle millions of indicators. On the other hand, SIMs can generally handle much larger Intel databases. Because of this, only high priority indicators and indicators that require live traffic should be loaded on sensors, while the rest of the indicators can be loaded on the SIM. Depending on resource availability, it's common to load entire intelligence databases on SIMs. However, that provides little additional value if it's also on the sensor. Sharing the threat intelligence with relevant stakeholders is the next step. This can mean distributing it to different teams within the organization, like an incident response team or the executive team or even sharing with external partners or industry groups or even the entire company. While you won't share the entire list of indicators with everyone, sharing information about campaigns and TTPs being used to target your organization will help everyone be on the lookout for suspicious behavior. Next to dissemination, automation is one of the most overlooked steps in the process it's often impossible to keep security tools updated with the latest intelligence manually. As new threats and attack patterns emerged, sensors should be updated with the latest threat intelligence to improve their detection capabilities. This requires automation. Just as an example, you could query Mandiant's Intel database every 15 minutes and you would get new and updated information every single time. There's also an advantage to centralizing the automation. When you have multiple tools that depend on the same information, centralizing the automation ensures that all of those tools are working from the same sources, even if they don't get the same rule sets. And after all this action is taken, it's essential to monitor the results and gather feedback and 
This feedback can then be used to refine the threat intelligence process, tune out noisy alerts, ensure focus is updated as the threats adapt, and overall ensure the organizations are continuously maturing its security posture. By operationalizing cyber threat intelligence, organizations can proactively defend against cyber threats rather than just reacting to them when they actually happen. The goal is to provide actionable insights that can lead to improved security decision-making and more effective response to cyber threats.